Wool needles are definitely something you want to have in your notions bag. Believe me, if you've ever accidentally cut a yarn tail too short and had trouble weaving it in, wool needles are here to save the day. Hey Nerdy Knitter, Tanya here. I'm a certified knitting instructor and a master hand knitter, and I believe knitting is a form of self-care, that you can take time for yourself and your creative hobbies, but still create beautiful garments that you love to wear. And it's all about notions in this video. We've talked about them in the past. I'll link them down below or up in the corner. We've talked about the notions I don't use, the ones you don't use as well, the ones that I love and the ones you love as well, and also knitting tools, which I wouldn't really count as notions, bigger things that you need to knit with, like yarn winders and things like that. But in this video, I thought we would look at our top 10. What are the top 10 things that you can't knit without, like you need them. And surprisingly, I think I could have made this a top seven. I put some extra bonus things in there as well, but I could get away with just having a few things in my notions bag and I would be fine. But of course, there's things that are nice to have that make the job easier. Now, one of the other questions I asked was, do you keep everything in one bag? This is my notions bag. I got it at a yarn festival a couple years ago and I really love it. I open it and it's sort of like a rectangular box shape so I can see everything that's in there. I have all of my bags are in there. All of my knitting projects are each in their own individual bags. And then when I'm ready to pick one and knit with it or knit on it, then I grab my notions bag at the same time. And one of the questions I asked was, do you have all your notions in the same kit or do you have like separate ones that you put right in with your knitting projects? And I'll put a link to that conversation down below. But personally, I'm pretty thrifty and I don't want like multiples of everything I use. So I keep everything in one little kit and I can just grab it when I'm ready to work on any project that I'm working on. I will say I have a very smaller version of the kit that I keep in my purse just for travel knitting that has just like maybe scissors and a tapestry needle and a couple of stitch markers. And I think that's the only thing I keep in that one, but that's specifically to keep in my bag. So if I'm ever out and about and I have knitting with me, then I at least have like the bare essentials that I would need. So I guess we could say a top three. For me, that would be a tapestry needle and scissors and some stitch markers. I can get away with those then I could be okay. Now, a few caveats here. I am not including things like knitting needles or yarn. I mean, those are things we obviously need to knit with, but I wouldn't call them notions, like the small things and tools that we use while we're knitting. So no needles, <laughs> no yarn, you need them anyway, or you can't really knit, but everything else, all the other little things that you could use. So I'm also gonna share your comments as well. When I asked this question originally about your top 10 list, you had so many great things to say. I wish I could share them all. There were so many good comments. I will leave a link to that conversation down below so you can go check out what other knitters had to say, but I pulled out quite a few and they're in this video. So let's just dive right into it. So first we're gonna start with a few of those comments. So Skypaw says my project bag right now has only the project and the needles it's on. A tape measure, darning needles, snips, and extra stitch markers. So apparently that's what I've deemed to be most necessary. And I totally agree. I forgot tape measure. I don't have that in my, my on the go bag, but I probably should have one in there just in case. But yeah, you can get by with just a few things. Now Beth says, snips, stitch markers, tape measure, crochet hook, and tapestry needle are really all I ever use. So we could have done maybe a top five list and this probably would have been a smaller list because you'd really have to pare things down, but top 10 is good. Then Karen says, measuring tape, scissors, tapestry needles, and a holder like yours, pencils are the essentials, I think. Stitch markers and needle measure are also quite handy. And one more, Ruth says, scissor, tape measure, stitch markers, gauge with needle sizes, tapestry needle with curved end, and of course, a container to hold it all. Okay, so those are like the basics. You know, we all need the basic things. We all need something to cut the yarn, something to weave in our ends, maybe some stitch markers, a few other things that are nice to have. So the first thing, I know it's so boring and they were mentioned in those comments as well, snips, something to cut your yarn. I mean, a lot of the time, depending on the yarn, if it's wool or animal based, you can just grab it between your hands and pull and break it. Sometimes you can't do that. I've even had some sock yarns. Man, that stuff is strong. Or acrylics, good luck trying to do that. You'll hurt your hands first. Um, plant fibers as well. Most of the time they are pretty strong and hard to like just break. So you need something to cut them with. And I really like these snips right here. I also have, they're not here. They're in my crochet. I do have a separate little crochet notions pouch, but it, had, it has all of my crochet needles, plus some snips and more tapestry needles, things like that in it. And those snips, I should switch them out because they're actually for steaking as well. So if you've ever done 
uh, color work project in the round and you want to cut it open, then you need some really sharp pointed scissors to cut that open. But I mean, kind of a boring tool, but it has to be in that top 10 list because it's something we definitely need to have on hand. Tapestry needles as well. They're pretty boring, but we all need to have them because we have to weave in the ends unless you're one of the trendy knitters right now with the knitting with roving and really bulky yarn and leaving all the unwoven ends exposed. Like that seems to be a trend. I'm not on TikTok, but that's what my daughter shows me occasionally and it's a thing, but for me, not so much, but I don't care about trends. So tapestry needles, I like this little container. This is chibi needles, I guess they're called. They are little just sewing needles, but they have a little bent tip and I really like them when I'm weaving in ends uh, using duplicate stitch specifically. I like to weave in ends that way. You just follow the path of the yarn on the wrong side of the work holds really well, doesn't really come out. I've never had it like come out because it just, once you get it in the position of the other stitches, then you wash the project, it really just kind of wants to stay there. So I've never had issues when I weave in ends, but sometimes I might accidentally cut my yarn tails too short and then it's hard to use a tapestry needle and it's also really hard to like follow that path for the duplicate stitch because the tail is just too short to do that. When that happens, wool needles to the rescue. These are something new that I didn't even know existed till a little while ago when one of the comments that was left, somebody said that for weaving in ends, they really like wool needles. I'm like, what are wool needles? And I Googled and found them. These things are fabulous. It's just a plastic little needle. There's probably some metal ones too. And it has this little plastic loop on the end. So if you ever, and they come in different sizes as well. If you ever have tails that are too short, you can slide this through like the stitches in the back of your work. You can't really do duplicate stitch with it. I don't think, I mean, unless your tail is long enough. Um, and then you put your yarn in that little loop and zip it right through. So even if the tail is super short, you can like put it in there and pull it through and it will work just fine. Like I try not to cut my tails too short, so I don't use these a lot, but when I do, these really come in handy. So to whoever mentioned these, thank you so much. These have been a lifesaver. Now my top 10 or uh, let's say top five list couldn't be complete without stitch markers. And I'm putting all kinds of them together in one category. I'm not separating them out by different shapes or sizes, but I like my stitch markers and I use, I use them a lot and I use different ones for different things. I like uh, little closed rings like these right here which I just picked up because I wanted more. I have too many projects and I needed more stitch markers because I use them a lot. And that type, or like the elastics from braces, like I have a bunch from my daughter when she had braces, so I love those as well. When I'm doing something that has lots of repeats and I want to separate out each repeat. I like the elastics when I'm doing lace specifically because I can leave them in there when I, because I use lifelines a lot when I, knit lace because I don't want to be trying to fix <laughs> stitches and things that mess up in that. So lifelines are nice and I can leave those elastics right in there with the lifeline, cut them out later if I have to, no big deal. But yes, definitely closed rings are the type I love for like separating repeats in a pattern. And then the little bulb type, little metal bulbs, light, light, the light bulb markers, the little like coilless safety pins, things like that. Those I love to like stick in a specific stitch. Um, if I'm keeping track of like a central double decrease or if I'm counting rows like in a sock or rounds or something like that, I use those to keep track of my stitch counts or my row counts or my decrease counts or whatever. Those are perfect for that because they're really light and they don't like drag on your project. Now I also like the plastic version of those, like the little safety pin ones. These I like as well. If I'm gonna like mark the right side of the work, I can stick one of those on there. Or if I wanna like really have like a, a stitch that's marked and have it really noticeable, then those big chunky plastic ones are better for that as well. Or I'll use those generally for like the beginning of round. I pop those on in most cases. Actually, I have some, I think they're just maybe Clover or Susan Bates or something. They're just little rings with little hearts on them, bright red. And I use, those seem to like be the ones I use for like my beginning of round because they're so bright and just really obvious. So, and they always, I don't use them for 
the whole like the rest of the stitch markers for the project but you want one that's like different than all the rest so you can mark out like your beginning beginning of round or something like that as well so yes just give me all the stitch markers except for those lobster claw ones not a fan of those somebody did a few comments that were left to mention that they like those for their crochet projects and i can understand crochet the stitches are a lot sturdier with all that yarn and i feel like they would hold better in that i'm always scared of snagging my knit stitches with um those lobster claw clasps but I can see how they'd be really handy for crochet so don't get me started I don't need to buy more stitch markers I have lots of them and I use them all though so and I'm not the only one you left lots of comments about them Krista says I'm addicted to my light bulb stitch markers I'm mainly a sock knitter and find these tiny little guys go in and come out easier than the plastic or clasp style stitch markers definitely true I use those as well when I'm doing socks Sarah says stitch markers closed ones for needles and bulb safety pins ruler tape measure small scissors tapestry needle blocking mats and pins Ooh, i forgot about those crochet hook for drop stitches and occasionally a needle gauge that's it don't really use anything else and then edna nicole says magnetic stitch markers so i can find all the drop stitch markers in my carpet and couch with a swipe of a magnet and my eyes closed and a wooden crochet hook by clover that has a point on the other end designed to fix mistakes but i also use it for making cables so i don't need a real cable needle ever Ooh, that's a really good tip but the magnetic ones i hadn't that's really fabulous a lot of mine are plastic so that wouldn't work but uh this morning i was setting up to record and i accidentally knocked my little table over back here over Nothing broke, thank goodness, but yes, it, I have a little like llama ceramic dish that holds some stitch markers and they went everywhere. So I had to like scour the floor for all of those, but magnetic ones, that would have been super easy to find them. So I really like that tip. Now that last comment also mentioned crochet hooks and I definitely agree. They're in my top 10 list, probably yeah, in my top five as well. I use these a lot. I really like these double ended ones for my knitting. I wouldn't like actually crochet with these. I would use regular crochet hooks, but these are great when you've got to use like a, do a little bit of crochet somewhere. They're double sided. You've got like your basic sizes here. I think there might be another one in this set that I have somewhere else. Um, but it's got all of the basic sizes, really small to, to really thick ones here and perfect for picking up dropped stitches. I much prefer to use a crochet hook to do that than a, a knitting needle um, or three needle bind off instead of that third needle crochet hook to the rescue. Um, a crochet cast on, which I will use sometimes when I want like an, a cast on edge that matches like the basic bind off edge or a pinhole cast on. These get quite a bit of use, so definitely something that I like to have. I mean, I could get away with probably just having one as long as it were on the small side, so I could use it for most of my projects. But this little set, I think I got these from Knit Picks, uh, came in a nice little plastic case, which is another case I use. I keep a few notions at my desk when I'm working, so, and I think that's probably where the other crochet hook is. Um, but the case even was really nice and just really nice little set of double-sided crochet hooks. And I'm not the only one. Melissa says my must-have notions would be a double-headed crochet hook for fixing mistakes, locking stitch markers, tapestry needles, tape measure, scissors, and a pen. I do use needle protectors all the time, but not absolutely necessary. And then Mountain Mom Designs, in approximate order of frequency, sharp scissors, tapestry needles with sharp tip, blunt tip, and bent tip, and fine, medium, and chunky gauge, measuring tape and rigid ruler, stitch markers, locking, and the round hexagonal needle gauge handy tool fix it tool or crochet hook for fixing mistakes or split stitches lately i'm using needle stoppers prefer the coco knits donuts and very occasionally stitch saver barber cord pearl strings for trying on works in progress now along with the crochet hook somebody mentioned um I think it's this next comment here. Yes, my bare minimum notions include a tape measure, scissors, and a Susan Bates handy tool, tapestry needle, and a few light bulb stitch markers. It's amazing how seldom I reach for anything else. I agree, like I could have made like maybe a top seven list for the things I use the most because the actual, most of the time, very small list, the things I've mentioned are probably the things that get used most often. I like the handy tool for fixing mistakes and redistributing excess yarn from loose stitches as I come across them. In fact, I think I use the pointy end more often than I use the crochet hook end. I had to look this up. I didn't know what she meant by this, but this is such a neat tool. It has that crochet hook on one end, but then a knitting needle tip on the other. So you're getting the best of both worlds in one little 
device so you could use this to pick up your dropped stitches but you also have that needle tip on the other end for other things like she says for moving excess yarn if you've got large stitches or something like that it would be fabulous for that so like I need another tool to add to my bag but I've got my crochet hooks already so I don't really need this but if you wanted something like that then this would be a good alternative and I'm wondering if Adina in another comment if this is what she was talking about when she said she doesn't use um, a cable needle because she has something like this. So I'm wondering that this would probably work for that as well. So definitely you should have a crochet hook even in your knitting kit because you'll, you're gonna need it eventually, probably at some point. I use mine quite a bit. Now the next thing is something pretty simple and pretty cheap, embroidery floss. I use this quite a lot or any sort of thing that you would use for waist yarn. If you wanna use other yarns, sometimes I use like really smooth light colored sock yarn. I'm knitting like a worsted weight project and I need to put it on waist yarn, but I like embroidery floss. You could even use like dental floss or fishing line, something like that. I use it for lifelines in all kinds of projects or to hold stitches in a pinch. Um, I do have stitch holders on my list. We're gonna get to those because they did make my top seven, uh, definitely that I use. But if I didn't, if I wanted to pare down that list even more then embroidery floss could double and just hold, you work as a stitch holder as well. So I could try things on or, you know, put a thumb gusset on hold or whatever. But I like embroidery floss because you can get so many different colors. So you can always find one that's like a different color from your knitting project. And I've left it in and even washed my projects and I've never noticed any kind of bleeding from the thread. So I think they're probably color fast for most cases. Not that I've used any really super dark colors. I usually usually stick to light pastel colors if I can. Um, and then if like even you're doing like a, a sock weight project or something like that, you can take the embroidery floss and cut the length you need and then like pull the plies apart so you have like a super thin lifeline if you needed it. So for me, embroidery floss or some other form of using something for lifelines or in a pinch as a stitch holder, which brings me to the next thing on my list, which would be stitch holders. So of course, in a pinch, I could use that embroidery floss, but um, I have space to fill in this top 10 list and stitch holders would be the thing that I would put there. Now I like this kind. It is just this plastic cord. It has a needle tip on one end and this little felt or rubber stopper on the other so you can pop your needle tip in there there's a little bead to keep everything together on that side and you can keep your stitches on hold I actually have two of these so like so I can use uh, one for the back of my sweater and one for the front and they have lots of room to move without being worried that they're gonna fall off the stitches if you're a very small person then you could probably get away with just one but I have two for that reason um, so when I have a lot of stitches that I want to put on holes, then I like this. So of course you could use that barber cord, jewelry cord stuff. I have not tried that. Um, I keep meaning to buy some. I will eventually just to give it a try. But when I have smaller amounts of stitches, well, thumb gussets, I might even just put them on a cable needle and put like needle stoppers on the end. But uh, for like the underarm stitches, these are just too big, this thing here. I like something like this, if I had to put like underarm stitches on hold, because it's basically a double pointed needle, really. Or you could use this as a, in a, as a cable needle in a pinch. And this little thing fits over each end, holds your, need, your stitches in place. Let me get it back in there. And then what I like about it is that I can knit right off this. I don't have to transfer stitches to a needle. I can just take the end off this and just knit my stitches when I'm ready to take those stitches from being on hold to actually working them. I can knit right off this, which is really nice instead of having to transfer. But of course, I mean, this only works for a small number of stitches, as many as you could fit on there. You couldn't do like the whole body of a sweater, but underarm stitches, um, probably a little too big and chunky for a thumb gusset, but I do like my stitch holders. I find them very convenient. Um, I'll use embroidery floss sometimes if that's what I have or if it's like another, maybe like lace shawl or something like that. Can't see me putting that on hold at all. I use it for lifelines in that case, but that works as well. And I mean, there's lots of ways you can put stitches on hold. Oh, and even like your circular needle cords, just take the tips off, put the stoppers on that 
works great. I love doing that if it's like a provisional cast on. I've got a sweater going right now where I started the neckline with a provisional cast on. So instead of putting that on waist yarn, I did the provisional cast on over the my, the, the needle I was working with and also like a spare circular needle cord. Then I put the stoppers on. So all of those stitches are already on a cord and I just have to put my needle tips in and I can start knitting that provisional edge in the other direction. That's really nice. I don't like, I'm not a fan of having to pick out like the crochet edge on a provisional cast on and pick up all those stitches, especially if they're tiny. Mine aren't super tiny, but it's like two yarns held together and that I felt like that was going to be a pain to try to unzip a provisional cast on and pick up stitches like that. So yes, a cable or cord from your circular needle kit is a great alternative as well for a stitch holder. And this made Tammy's list as well. Double ended stitch holder. I'm guessing like the one I have tape measure and stitch markers, definitely something to include. And yes, the next one on my list is a ruler or tape measure. I'm going to say both and stick them in the same category because I use both. If I'm measuring a work in progress, which I don't usually do, then I will use a tape measure. I don't usually do that because I like to use my gauge information and then I will go, go I will count rows based on what I got in my, the gauge measurement I got in my swatch because knitting a work in progress or measuring that work in progress can be a bit iffy, especially if your yarn is going to change and grow when it gets washed. So that's a little iffy. I do like it as well if I have to measure like a finished project, then I use a tape measure for that. But if possible, I use a hard sided ruler because I mean, that's not going to change shape like your tape measure can stretch out after time and wear. So um, I prefer a ruler for measuring things like gauge or if I even on a project like I want to check the gauge, I lay it flat and I use a hard sided ruler and measure like as much as I can across the project to make sure my gauge is on target. I feel like this is kind of a boring list, but they're all sort of essentials that you need. And for me personally, I think I could stop my list right there and be totally fine. Like I could do all of the knitting I want to do with just those things. I guess, what was that? Seven. So we could have a top seven list, but then there are things that are nice to have. And this is where I had to try to narrow things down a little, because there's lots of other notions and tools you can use. Um, but I wanted to keep it to just 10. So I only have a few more slots to fill. So I thought of the things that I use the most that I don't necessarily need, but they're really nice to have. And one of those for me would be these uh, needle protector needle holders or needle protectors, whatever they're called. I don't know. I really actually need to buy some more. I only have three and I'm at the point where I sometimes have more than three projects on the go. And most of my knitting is done on circular needles, even if it's knit flat. I use my interchangeables and you just take your needle tips. I've got a project right here so I can just show you what this looks like. You take your project and you just slide the needle tips into this rubber end. It's got a little slit in it and it just holds them together like that. I mean, it clanks around and makes noise, but it protects your project. It's not going to like your needle tips aren't going to stab into your yarn or your project. It protects your project bag as well. I've had issues with some thin bags where the needle tips will poke right through the bag and it won't get like your needle, your stitches aren't going to fall off the needles or anything like that. So I really like these for that specifically because for the type of needles I use, then these needle stoppers work really well. They're just a bit clangy and noisy as well. Now there are other ones of course, but I like these because they uh, cover the tips of the needles. Like I, I have some that you can little coils that wrap around both needles to hold them together, but it doesn't cover the tips and those can still poke through your bag. So I like these a little bit more. And even uh, I think they're only recommended for like up to maybe like a, a US eight or something like that. But I have a project on tens right now and I can even get those in there. I just have to do them like slide in the first needle, push it down in and then slide the second one. And you just can't push them both in at the same time, but they'll both fit in there. So it works even for, I don't know how much larger you could go past like a US 10, but it's going to hold all your other needle sizes under that at least. There's other needle holders as well. I have like some little cardboard tubes for DPNs. I don't really love those. I keep meaning to buy like some of those uh, fabric covers with snaps that go over your project while it's on its DPNs. I think that would work for flexible DPNs too. Yeah, that would work there. Um, but most of my knitting is done on circulars 
And then if I have to do small things, then I use either DPNs. I like a magic loop, so-so. I prefer two circulars. If I have enough needle tips for it, then I'll use two circulars. And then you don't really need anything to hold your needle tips because it's gonna stay in the middle of the project anyway. So I don't even really use needle holders for that. But yes, I like needle holders. They work well for me. And McKee says both light bulb and small soft silicone ring stitch markers. Barely feel them under your hands when knitting. I also use my sock ruler regularly as it makes it so easy to be consistent with the measurements for each sock. Oh, I didn't include that in my list. I do use mine quite a lot too. I have a tool that works like a double-ended crochet hook for fixing dropped or turned stitches. Don't need it often, but when you do, you'll be glad it's in the Notions bag. Another unique Notion I use regularly is a needle keeper. It's a metal tube with a silicone cap on one end. You insert the tips of your circular needles in to stop them from poking through your project bag. Surprisingly useful. I definitely agree. Next one is my neck light. I know this isn't technically a Notion, but... And I had to fill in space. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm not sure if I would have my sock ruler here because I use that every time I knit socks. I think though, after a certain amount of time, if you are, I mean, if you're knitting socks for like the same size foot, like if you're knitting for yourself all the time, maybe you would just get used to like the, you always need a specific number of rounds for the foot and then you wouldn't need the sock ruler, but I still use mine. So I feel like that should be runner up, but neck light wins because I use it every day. Like I like to knit in the evening. Sometimes I don't like like the light the overhead light on when we're watching TV at night. So I can just use my neck light and I can knit just fine. And I don't need all of the other lights on in the, the house. Um, and it's also handy if there's like super dark yarn, you can adjust the brightness and crank up the brightness. Make sure it's fully charged if you're gonna have dark yarn. Cause it, that, like, at least mine, it like plugs into a, um, goodness, a USB. I wanted to say HDMI. That's not it. <laughs> USB port to charge it. And you can see at least mine, it like slowly starts to dim and dim and dim. So I like to make sure I keep it charged pretty well, especially if I'm using dark yarn, because I want all of the, the lights. You can like adjust the settings with the buttons on each light. I've even used it during the day. If I have, like I knit some black mittens and uh, picking up the thumb gusset stitches, <laughs> oh my word. It was broad daylight and I still use my neck light to give me a lot, extra, a lot of extra light so I could really see what I was doing and it's very helpful for that. So a few more comments. Mel says, I keep all the obvious ones but I couldn't live without my neck light for nighttime knitting and a nail file. Nothing worse than one raggedy fingernail that keeps snagging the yarn. Oh, so true. Yes, I didn't even have that on my list. Lotion as well. My hands are very dry right now. So yeah, I noticed like my hangnails would snag some really fine yarns and something to soften up those nails or dry skin or yeah, nail file. Really good one to have on there. Then Roxanne Riches and shout out to Roxanne. I love her channel. These are the things always within reach. Locking stitch markers, so many uses for them. Measuring devices of various types. Gauge rulers that also measure needle tips. Measuring tapes, sock rulers, I use all of them. DPNs in various diameters for laddering down a span of stitches and knitting them back up. Scissors, crochet hooks in various sizes. Yarn needles, some straight, some bent tip, various sizes. And a small tube to hold them so they don't get lost. Highlighter tape, I frequently knit complex stitch patterns and use paper charts not an app. Light colored fingering weight yarn to use as waste yarn, a pouch to hold the most used notions. Not sure if an ought light counts as a notion, but I can't knit without good light. I always have a scrap paper and pen nearby in case I want to calculate something or make a note that I won't need to keep. I think that was pretty much everything on the list. Mine is the highlighter tape, which brings me to the next thing, some kind of chart or a pattern manager. If you like to print your charts, highlighter tape is great for keeping track of where you are in a chart or in your pattern for that matter. Um, or if you use like a chart keeper, I have one back there that I use occasionally if I have like complicated large charts and I can print it out and it's got magnets to keep in, keep everything in place. And I use the one of the longer magnets to like keep track of where I am in the chart. But most of the time I'm just using Knit Companion. I put all of my knitting patterns in my Google Drive and then I can transfer them over to Dropbox to put into Knit Companion when I'm using that particular pattern. And I just, I find that is enough. I just use the free version. I've never upgraded to the paid and it works just fine for what I need. I like the little, like there's a little red mark that you can mark things on on each page and then like a highlighter to highlight where you are in the pattern. And um, at the bottom you can keep notes if you need to. 
but I also do actually sometimes depending on the complexity of the project or if it's something I'm designing myself I'll have handwritten notes on some just note paper or a post-it and those go right in the knitting bag as well but Knit Companion works for me and here's some comments from some others about the things they use. Blaze 24, scissor tape measure, tapestry needle, stitch markers and progress keepers, stitch fixers, crochet hooks, spiral cable needle, twice sheared cheap row counters, tins for the project specific notions, notions pouch for the ones that come with me everywhere for every project, and a Chromebook dedicated to Knit Companion and stitch stoppers. So another Knit Companion user. And then Diana, not sure this counts as a notion but I love using my notebook. It was a game changer for me because now I don't have to remember anything and we have to keep track of a lot don't we yes we definitely do so a notebook is always handy and then my craft room says my rabbit app for Ravelry so I can look at my pattern and also get distracted and look at other patterns or how others have used yarn I have stashed when I should be looking at the pattern I'm working on squirrel <laughs> stitch markers row counter pending pattern small scissors, yarn cutter, firm gauge ruler, sewing measure tape, crochet hook, bent tip tapestry needle, really good lighting if more than basic stitches, good lighting makes such a huge difference, and device to watch YouTube podcasts if pattern is easy. So I haven't used Ravit. I hear good things about it though, so if you use Ravelry a lot it could be a good mobile app option for you. I mean I use Ravelry but usually like on my computer or I just browse it on my phone if I'm looking for something. But Ravit is worth checking out if you use Ravelry quite a lot. And then Laura says scissors, yarn gauge, tape measure, darning needles, pencil, little case with both locking and snag free stitch markers in a few sizes, a tiny scale. Oh yeah, I didn't put that on my list either. I have a, a digital scale I use. Small crochet hook, that's eight, so I'm counting my iPhone. I put my patterns in iBooks. So yes, another great, whatever device you like. Do, are you, maybe that should be a question. Do you like to print your patterns out? Or do you use some sort of like digital device to access your pattern? I feel like we should have a poll about that. Now that's my top 10 list, but you had more things to say. So I want to highlight some of those comments here because there were some fabulous things in that list. First is from Bonnie. Besides all the usual stuff, plastic page protectors. I put my patterns in them, write my notes right on the plastic with permanent marker. That way I can pull the pattern page out if I want and it's clean and unmarked. I really love that idea. If you're print stuff, this is a great way to keep track of things without marking up your pattern itself. And then band-aids for the finger I push my needle with, a chain row counter, scissors, stitch markers, sock roller scale, needle protectors, tape measure, sharp tapestry needle, crochet hook. Yes, I did not think of things like that. I don't usually have an issue. I do like to push a lot. I tried to break that habit, haven't broken it yet. But sometimes, especially if my skin is dry, it starts to like sort of like really ache in one specific spot so band-aid or thimble would be a good thing for that and then one more small gauge crochet hook for fixing mistakes a flexible dpn instead of a cable needle and a nice project bag that's easy to throw over a shoulder for knitting on the go and then edited to add the row counter chains basically closed stitch markers but in a chain and each link has a number attached then you add a lobster clasp marker for your tens spot so I've never used that, but I think that's a pretty neat idea to keep track of the rows that you're counting. And we have a little bonus section of comments here about the bag you use to hold your notions. Like I mentioned at the beginning, I have one bag, everything stays in here. Well, that will fit. My neck light doesn't fit in there, that's for sure. But all the small stuff stays in that notions bag and I bring it with me with all of my projects. I don't have a separate one for every project and you had some comments to share about that as well. Besides the obvious ones, stitch markers, scissors, sharp and blunt needle tip, tape measure, crochet hook, etc. I would say a proper case to store and carry all those things is essential for my lifestyle. If I couldn't carry these things around the house with me as a mom, I'd be a knitting mess. Scrap yarn and extra cables for putting stitches on hold, a little notebook and a pen for notes. It's also a must, especially at the inception of a project. Definitely, I like to take notes a lot. Crystal says, I keep a tape measure, darning needle, scissors, cable needle, stitch holders, stitch markers have become a recent addition. I used to use scrap yarn loops a notebook and pen, and a needle gauge. I am currently researching ideas for Notions pouches. The giant needle roll and small zippered Notions bag aren't pleasing me anymore, and I am tired of searching through all of the project baskets to find something. I also have a really neat row decrease increase tracker that I found in a thrift store. I'd like to see a picture of that, whatever that is. That sounds pretty neat. But yes, finding the right combination of storage items for your needles and your Notions that can, I don't know, is that tricky for you or do you like have a set 
thing. I think all, I mean, I just used my Chagos. They're in a case already. My One Notions bag, they're like right there. But I'm thinking if I start adding more needles and stuff, I might have to invest in like a case to hold everything. We shall see. And then Karen says crochet hooks, steel darning needles in various sizes, locking stitch markers, pencils, small scissors, retractable tape measure, and anything needed for the specific project I am working on. And a good sturdy case for all of it. I tend to look for more makeup bags or pencil bags in clearance areas, and I prefer a bag that will sit upright and open wide for me to riffle through it. Normally I keep all of my daily use notions together in that bag and just put the whole thing in whatever work in progress bag I am working on. Extra stuff and specialty tools and odds and ends go in my craft desktop storage unit. That sounds really organized. Now I'm thinking about bags. Yeah, makeup bags would be really nice, like to sort things. You don't have to use like specific knitting bags. You can use other types of bags as well. That's really neat. If you want to read more comments, then you'll find both of these conversations linked down below. Your top 10 notions and also your notions bags, so whether you have one or multiple. You'll find both of those linked down below. And if you want to talk about your favorite notions, be sure to leave a comment. What would be on your top 10 list? Did we forget something that should be on our top 10 list? Leave a comment and share that with us. And if you want to continue hanging out with me, I'll put a video right here and we can keep talking about our knitting notions. I'll see you in the next video.